Hi, y'all. Welcome to another episode of Sun's Vision Art Life. My name is Adewale Boke Jr. Please review us, rate us, give us a five star, don't be a hater. Today, we're going to continue talking about superheroes in the Carjax Assassin universe, specifically the Carjax. But now, the next member on the team, Shepard, a character based on my best friend. Um, he's he's one of the uh, he, this guy's a born actual born arrow type of guy, but he's a very very amazing character. Like I said, the characters come from based on the people that are important to me in my life. And this character here is based on my best friend. You know, previous ones were based on my two brothers, my sister, my dream girl. Well, now we've gotten to my best friend. And so this guy right here, Shepard, is, he's, he's, he's the quantum arrow guy on the team, man. He's, he's, a, he's a sick character. But if we get into this podcast, we'll talk about Shepard. Let's thank our sponsors. This time, Vision Podcast, because we've got to pay these bills. It's brought to you by Tegler. If you need the executive services from plumbers to presentations and everything in between, Search Tegler. That's Tegler.com, y'all. Don't wait. Search today. That's Tegler.com. As I stated before, join forces with an amazing company, Tegler, the best search engine out there for professionals, whether it's pediatricians, plumbers, nurses, contractors, landscapers, anybody professional, man, to do services, professional services, you got to go on Tegler.com and search Tegler.com. That's the best place to find them. And we've and, and being that I know the owner, CEO, and owner, Aditai Buke, one of the best CEOs out there in the world, in the galaxy, you definitely know Tegler is the best spot to search for, your, for whatever profession you're looking for. So that's Tegler.com, y'all. That's Tegler.com. Don't wait. Search Tegler today, y'all. And this podcast also brought to you by Anadel for the Nanko. Don't live with foot pain. Let Anadel for the Nanko make your feet happy again. That's AnadelCenter.com for details, y'all. That's AnadelCenter.com for details, y'all. Details, y'all. As I stated, as you well know, I used to have a lot of foot pain, but these custom orthotics were designed for me by Dr. Nero Nusode, the best foot specialist in the galaxy. And as you know, these stick strictly to my foot and guess where they're going to? Every pair of bathers that I wear. You know, so I, only, I, only, I got my shoe wear, I got my own footwear line now, just like I got my own clothing line now, you know, so I only wear my own footwear, but since I'm wearing, since I've had these custom orthotics for a long time, I kept on wearing them in my bathers. And my bathers combined with these custom orthotics make my feet feel great. So sunvision.com, um, go to t- anadelcenter.com, and make an appointment today so you can see Dr. Nero so and get your foot on in the right direction, the right path, so no more pain. So AnnaDaleCenter.com for details, y'all. AnnaDaleCenter.com for details, y'all. And so I don't forget also, too, with Tegler, if you are in the Long Beach, California area, or just California in general, or if you're in the Virginia area, please search Tegler.com because that's where the services have been offered. The best search engine, search engine out there for professionals, electricians, plumbers, pediatricians, landscapers, you name it, see Tigler.com. And it's the same thing with um, AnnaDaleCenter.com. Anadel, they're located in the Frisco, Texas area. But if you're in the Houston area, hey, come on, drive. That's a number but a four-hour drive, right, to get your feet where it needs to be. So if you're in the Dallas, Texas area, Houston area, uh, I'm trying to think, maybe even uh, San Antonio, uh, uh, Austin, hey, AnnaDaleCenter.com, y'all. AnnaDaleCenter.com for details, y'all. So, y'all, that's the right there that the sponsors paid our bills. Now, let's- Now let's get to this amazing podcast. And like I said before, I'm excited because the next character up on the docket is Shepard. Before I get into it and mess around and forget like I always do when I don't show the character, well, guess what? I'm about to show the character now. So let's show the character. Quantum Arrows and Quantum Bows guy himself, man. The main man, Shepard himself. That's Shepard right there. Based on my best friend. Yeah, that, that dude is sick. Yeah, I know. A lot of people are like, man, this dude is fire when they see him at the art shows. And they just know because you might, a lot of y'all love artwork just like I do posters. Well, guess what? Available on soundvision.com. Go get your pair today. We got this poster available on soundvision.com. Shepherd, just search. You'll find it easily. Anything related to Shepherd, you'll find it. You can get in different sizes too 11 by 17, 13 by 19, canvas art, all kinds of stuff. So, soundvision.com, y'all, and get your Shepherd on. Like I said, man, Shepherd, and I got to show you him also too with the group because. When I first created him, for one gym right there, that shepherd right there in the red with the quantum arrow and quantum bows. That's him right there, the version one right there. You know, let me shrink this. Card Drive Assassin version one right there. This is a classic, man. Every time I look at this, I'm like, wow, this is where all this started, man. You know what I mean? But yo, that shepherd right there. So now look, the things I'm going to focus on today about Shepard, just like all the other amazing superheroes, his origins, his history. Abilities, comics, animation, movies. You know I got to do all that, the whole gambit, man, because this guy is a, is a hero unto himself. And so Shepard, right, got to give you the history of it, the the, 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 the origins of this guy. So as, as you well know, 
Uh, he's part of the Carjacks team. His real name is Vincent Pierce, alias is Shepard. Citizenship is Canadian American. Our uh, place of birth is Vancouver, Canada. Height 6'1, weight 195, eyes black because he's blind. Yes, we're gonna get into all that. Hair color is black, occupation surgeon. And you, you're like, what? He's a surgeon? Yeah, that's right. When I created this character, man, which is based on my best friend, Dr. Nero Nsode, the foremost specialist in the world in terms of foot specialist, I remember creating him. I said, bro, I'm going to create a character based on you. Like I told you before, all my characters are based on people that are really important to me, that were all integral parts of making this whole Cardiff Versace universe come together. And this guy right here, Shepard, is based on my best friend, Dr. Nero Nsode. And I remember creating him. He was like, he was like dude. I, I, he said, this is uh, this is amazing. This is crunk just enough. I mean, all kinds of different compliments, but he couldn't believe I based the superhero on him. I said, whoa, why would I not do that? You're one of the best human beings I know in my life. And so when I create this character, Shepard is the type of character that his, his uh, the, the, the origin came from my best friend who's a doctor in real life himself. And I said, I knew as I was completing the team, I started to figure out that I was putting the team together. We had an armor guy. We had a colonel, we had a sharpshooter, we had a, a hand-to-hand com, hand -hand combatant, we had a, was somebody based on my dream girl, and then I was like, okay, there's still somebody missing. We need a bow and arrow type of guy, but somebody who's unique in that way. Like, but then I also too, I was like, I gotta make this guy's gotta be blind because I want a lot of different people to be able to relate to him. And there's a lot of amazing human beings out there that do things they can't, haven't seen them. A thing in their life and they've achieved so many amazing things i said you know what shepherd's got to be that guy and it's funny enough when i created this character my mother told me you know there's gonna be a lot of people that are um that have disabilities is gonna love this guy i was like oh this is awesome and so as i sure enough as i go to the shows whether you are hearing impaired or you're visually impaired um those who are i know those who are visually impaired can't see shepherd but i've seen people that are hearing impaired they're like they point to him and i'm like whoa they're like yeah he's cool and i'm like really like i just created an amazing character because to me anybody who has to go through something overcome something so drastic and become what they become is a hero to me and so shepherd based on my best friend he uh there are so many similarities like my best friend went to college he went to prestigious university he worked his butt off man's been working since the day i've known him uh, i've known him for a good minute we both graduated from the state university um he pursued his craft in, uh, in medicine. I pursued my craft in, in the arts. And like this guy, Shepard, is the definition of a person who overcomes, who, who, who gets beyond what people told him he could do. Um, Shepard is like, a, um, uh, well, he's, he's the character on the team that has the wisdom. He's the guy that like when he says something, everybody listens. He doesn't talk too much. But when he does talk, man, it's on and popping. Just like my best friend in real life. He ain't too much of a talker. His actions do all the talking that he's going to do. You know what I mean? Um, I Like I told y'all. Even with the previous characters, I really tailored each character to meet the person that I based them on. So Shepard is just like my best friend. He's opinionated. He's, he speaks tactically. He speaks wisely. He understands what he wants to do. And he's also, even though he's said in his, uh, uh, he's a very uh, uh, religious individual. He goes to church every Sunday, but he's not so he's not so uh, stringent that he doesn't understand there's different people in this world. That's what makes him a great human being. That's the same way Shepard is. Shepard has that. Um, I want I don't want to call it a religious background, but he has a background like that where he's very spiritual. He believes in in, in, in the higher power. And so like I made Shepard become my best friend and then vice and all the attributes that Shepard has, my best friend has. And so creating Shepard was was a uh, was a uh, was very interesting. But what was challenging was creating him to make him look like people don't know, but the sink visor on his eyes, a lot of people don't know, is what allows him to see. So without the sink visor, he can't really see anything in the front so his best friend who is me cajun creates a zinc visor for him in battle so now he wears the zinc visor he doesn't necessarily wear it when he's a in doctor mode but when he's in battle mode he puts it on and he can see everything in the in the most coolest visual you can have i'm not going to discuss what it is because i can't talk too much about it because of the first official project of Zascom book that's coming out and of course the animation intro too and the animation is coming i can't i can only say so much but the visor allows him to see i mean this dude is when you have a people always ask me like he's blind how is he drawing on the bow and arrow why are you worried about that there's so many amazing people in this world that i see i see them every day when i'm walking or crossing the street they're blind and using a stick to cross across the street and i'm like these guys are amazing they're like able to um 
hear everything, feel everything. It's just like Daredevil in the cartoon that I used to watch from Marvel Comics. Well, I was like, you know what? I've always thought that was amazing to have a guy who couldn't see anything, but he could do so many things way better than people that could see. And that's Shepard right there. At sometimes being blind, he's had to lead. And it's you're gonna see it through the, as you see the comics come out on him and the animation series, you'll see, get to see why this guy's an amazing character. Shepard is the dude on the team that his words carry a lot of weight, even though he's not the leader. But when he speaks, he's always spoke. He always speaks in wisdom. And like I said, he's not so strange. And also, he brings that spirituality to the team where he balances everybody out. Everybody feeds off of him. He's always he, he's, he's, he's the guy that you don't worry about him because they don't treat him like, oh, yeah, we need to worry about him. No, no, they're like, he needs to worry about us because he's he's that amazing of a character. And so when I when I based him on my best friend, I was like, look, I'm going to make this guy blind and I'm going to make him a doctor. And I'm going to make him a surgeon. And he's going to make him a what? A surgeon? How's he going to be performing surgery on people? That's the beauty of amazing of a lot of people that are visually impaired. They can do so many amazing things that those of us who can see can never do. And so when I created Shepard, I was like, okay, this guy is going to be that dude with his eyes. Like people are going to be like, so many, so many people are going to relate to this guy. I can't tell how many times I'm always pointing when people see the poster with all the characters on it. People always point and they're like, who's the guy in the red? Who's the guy in the red? I'm like, that's Shepard, man. He's, he's the guy Quantum Arrow. Look, and if you're wondering who Shepard is, he's dead right in your eye. On the banner. That's him right there. He's probably the easiest thing I've ever pointed to. He's right next to his boy, next to my character, Cajun. So that's Shepard right there, man, with the Quantum Arrows and Quantum Bows. That's right. You know what I mean? So that's Shepard. And that's this guy's origins, man. You got this guy named Vincent Pierce, alias Shepard, who's just an amazing character. And the thing to top it off is that um, which I'm going to get to next when I, when I, as I talk about his history of what happened to him, how he became where he is. For, for, the, for the little I'm going to give you, all you need to know is that he is adopted, right? And he was raised by a family. His real family is unknown. Whether they're deceased or not deceased, that is still to be determined. You know what I mean? But yo, that's Shepard. He comes from a guy who's had to find his way through life. Imagine being blind and you're adopted and you really don't have a home and you have to build yourself to get where you got to. That's why it's always good. I always say, excuses are for those who don't want to be successful there's just some amazing people in this world they don't make no excuses they just go get it they don't care what's in front of them they just go get it that's shepherd right there he's that he's the true definition of a hero obstacles are not going to stop him from getting where he's got to go so yo that's origins of shepherd right there now right there now next up is his history the history of Shepard is a guy, and I'm going to read you a little snippet from the bio book because I can't tell you everything. It takes more than eyes to see, and on many occasions, this blind hero has had to lead. Fearless and courageous in heart and with a patience that can cook a stone, Vincent Pierre Shepard has endured a horrific childhood. His parents missing, he was sent to countless foster homes. So that's all I'm going to tell you. You know, like I told you in the origins, he's never really been the guy who, um, I got to break out the bio, the bio book so I can show you the history. He's never been the guy who knew where he was from, but it was important to know where he was going, which is something that Shepard's always been able to do. Yeah, he knew, he knows where he's going. Most people can see and they don't know where they're going. This guy can't see and he knows exactly where he's going. You know what I mean? And that's Shepard right there. Like, this dude was adopted. His real family is unknown. So he was adopted by some family. They sent him, he got a home to live in. He, has, he had prestigious, um, you know, of course he went through high school, and then got accepted to college, went to prestigious universities because of his brilliance as a science, in a science major, just like my best friend. He was a powder scholar in high school. So I decided Shepard was gonna be a, a, a scholar in high school too as well. And he got a, gets a scholarship to a major university. Yeah, my best friend went to University of Louisville just like me, so he got a scholarship to a university. Then after that, he pursues, his, pursues his further education, gets accepted to previous uh, uh, prestigious universities to study medicine. And he does that and then becomes the foremost specialist in terms of surgeons in the world. You know what I'm saying? It is, it is future Touristic world where all kinds of technology and science are coming together. Shepard is the foremost surgeon in the galaxy. This guy is known, man, and this is a blind dude. And so then, as she as Shepard, as Cajun assembles the team, you know he's not going to leave his boy out. And the only way to bring his boy is like, well, I don't mind joining the team, and I want to join the team because this battle seem this this need to save the world. I don't want you doing this alone. This is really, really why Shepard joins the team. He's like, I'm not going to leave your stupid butt to do this alone. So then, how am I going to join the battle? So then, he, Cajun creates the sync visor, which he puts on on his eyes, and his sync visor allows him to see in such a man. 
only way I can explain this infrared style, like, ugh, dude, it's so sick. That's, I'm not telling you too much, but you're gonna notice it in the comic book. And you can see the comic, you can see the animation series, you can see the comic series, you're gonna begin to see like, okay, this dude Shepard is sick. And so this guy is finding his history. Shepard spends most of his time in this whole um, Card of Assassin universe, figuring out his origins, where it came from. Because when you don't have your parents, if you're adopted, yes, you can be adopted by loving families, but you always gonna have that hole in like, okay, what do my real parents look like? Where have they come from? Even if your adopted parents are loving individuals and you should be grateful if you get any, to me, it's not a person that creates a child that makes the parent. It's anybody who's willing to take on that responsibility that makes a parent. Cause I've met a lot of am amazing individuals that come from, uh, that are adopted. And I've got to tell you, I have so much admiration for them because I myself almost ended up in an adopted, uh, adopted, uh, adopted home. So I have a greater, I have a greater, uh, appreciation for people that come from those circumstances and make amazing, amazing individuals of themselves. And so Shepard is that character. He comes from an adopted home. He's not really, uh, doesn't know who his true family is not cousins not siblings not any of that stuff and so he spends aside from achieving the amazing amazements he achieves in his personal career and his professional career he spent the other time figuring out who, who he is what his history is and so with the help of his friends and well the carjacks the other team members he's able to find who it is that his group families are and you have to make and i'm not going to tell you all too much about it but as shepherd goes into his own individual storylines you get to see what where this guy what this guy's dealing with and how he's able to do all these amazing things that he's doing. Like Shepard is one of those, he's, he's gonna have a, uh, he's got the history of like, he's got the history like, okay, I got, we don't know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you everything, whether he was abandoned or something happened to his parents. A lot of people have asked me that. And then a lot of those things, another thing a lot of people have asked me, which is always amazing, is he ever gonna find his parents? And I'm like, man, y'all are off the chain. And I think the reason why a lot of people ask me that is because they think like this guy deserves a happy ending, man. Are you kidding me? With all the stuff he's been through, you got to give this dude a happy ending. And sometimes as a creator, you don't want to be the sad guy all the time. So I don't know what's going to happen. But I do know Shepard is a character that for, for as long as I've been, since I created this College of Assassin Universe, a lot of fans that see me at Comic Expos are always asking me, where is this guy going to find his people? Is he going to find his people? It, it seems like it, it seems like a really big, important thing for a lot of people. And so when I think about the history of Shepard, right, just like all the other characters, that's where you all started right there. That's Quantum Arrows. That's the origin right there. Look at him. I did, I, that's when I didn't know what I was doing. I was just like, I'm just going to draw. And then as I got better, let me, let me get the next version. Look at that. As I got better. Yeah, you see that? As I got better. Look at that drawing. Look, look, look at the significant difference in the history of this character. Look at that. And look at this. Like, whoa. And then, of course, look at what's the one thing you notice about the boat, the, the, the arrow thing that I created for him, right? And yes, I spelled Shepard that way I spelled it. It's not how I spelled it. It's how you say it. I'm not trying to hide behind my dyslexia, but I spell things how I see it. Not how people want me to spell it. So I don't care if you don't think it's Shepherd. The name is Shepherd. Get used to it. Get used to, get used to saying Shepherd is what it is what the name is. And of course, look at that. Man, look at that sick look at the beginning of that. So I go from that to that to that. Man, how sick is that, dude? The skills just got sicker and sicker, and he just got sicker. I gotta tell you, Shepherd is one of those characters that I drew. He really, it was not, drawing him was never an issue. It was more finding a pose that fit him was always my thing. Like, it was important to me for me to draw a pose of him that looks so cool. And you can see, I decided to pick up, so this is version one, version three and four, two, three and four, and then of course version five. And wait till you see version six. What? Whoa. He, like, like I remember I was showing him, uh, showing my nephew today because I got to show him some of my art stuff. It's like, Uncle Junior, this character is super sick. He's like, man, I was like, yeah, appreciate that, bro. You know what I mean? But that's Shepard's history, man. It's not one of, it, it, it's one of those that you, if you're a big, if you're a big, uh, if you're a big comic fan, if you're a big comic fan, you're going to be pulling for this character. He's, he's, that's the kind of character that Shepard is. He's one of those characters you got to pull where you're like, this dude is the dude. Like I said, um, he's, he's, uh, he's been blind at birth. He uses a sink visor in battle. And even though the glass, even the the plain glasses that he wears, offers offers like a like a like a like a I don't know how to explain it like a shield to protect his eyes. But he can his senses are so acute. Like even though he lose, he lost his vision, everything else he can do is just acute. Like his sense of touch, his sense of smell, his sense of uh, instinctualness, if that's a word. 
he can feel things in a in a more ele elevated level. Like he's just that dude, man. So yo, that's the history of Shepherd, a character that's that's that was dropped off, found made, tried to made to be lost, but he decided I'm not gonna be lost. I'm gonna progressively and one foot at a time get myself to where I need to go. So yo, that's Shepherd history right there, right there. Next Next up are his abilities. Let me tell you, for a blind guy, this guy's abilities are off the chain. Let's talk about some of his um, um, martial arts historical discipline. So, you know, being that he was a, he felt like, even though he doesn't know what happened to his parents, but just so that he didn't fall victim to any kind of anything, he decided, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, get myself into a lot of martial arts disciplines, different types. And you know, excuse me, y'all, but his abilities, incorporate him understanding that okay i don't know what happened to my parents because but in, in regardless my ability is going to involve me in understanding the different martial art disciplines and so he's a master in taekwondo and karate and brazilian jiu-jitsu those specific disciplines specifically is what he chose because he wanted to have an array of certain type of cases and that's what taekwondo offers then of course karate is a lot of hand um foot movements then of course brazilian jiu-jitsu is the ground assault attack and so he always wanted to feel like if somebody tried to attack me from the ground or take my legs out, I got that. If somebody, if I need to fight somebody using their ribs, it's, it's cyclone kicks or whatever I might need to use, I got Taekwondo. If I just need to fight you in all matters of fighting, then I got you too. And not to mention, he also knows a little bit of boxing. But those were three disciplines he had, and he just didn't want to fall victim. And of course, his weapons are include a quantum bow and quantum arrows. Uh, I'm not going to tell you anything. And so of course, he got that sync visor. When he puts it on, as you can see, see version 5 is the best way to see him in complete uniformness if that's a word you see that look at the quantum arrow quantum arrows and quantum bow and then of course the sync visor right there you see that blue that blue thing right there and you see how the rest of the uniforms got lights all over it there's a reason why it's like that i'm not going to tell you but you you'll figure it out as the first official card of size combo comes out because it allows him to see and then allows his costume and his weapons to sync to you to be used with him and nobody else can use this that's another good thing about this quantum arrow and his tools that he was created for created for him by uh, cajun who is his best friend Everything Shepard has, nobody else can use it but Shepard. Um, excuse me. <laughs> Gotta get my water on. Yes, people are riding by in their motorcycle. You can hear it. But that's Shepard's, Shepard's abilities. And then, of course, his combat skills are second to none. And you know, when you talk about a blind guy, you, people are always trying to dare to underestimate him. They, I say, just like the way they underestimated uh, Daredevil from the Marvel Universe, they're gonna try that with with uh, with a uh, uh, with with uh, Shepard, who's from the SVU universe, the Science Vision universe. That's what I call it, SVU, Science Vision universe. You know what I'm saying? And the Kaja Assassin universe, and so KAU as we call it, Kaja Assassin universe. You know what I mean? KAU, Kaja Assassin universe. And so as Shepard from this universe. People are underestimating him. Even the villains are underestimating him. Various notorious uh, villains that they may get at, especially from the assassins. You know what I'm saying? And so people not realize that this guy's an incredible fighter. And you get to see it, whether it's fighting the assassins themselves or whether he's fighting the coyotes who are part of the assassins or fighting individuals like Snipes who is his arch nemesis yeah she's a lady from the assassins she's always looking to kick his butt and she has not found it and she has found it too difficult not to kick his butt she can't even do it you know what i'm saying and snipes is a, it's, it's it's no it's just straight sick on her own level and she's somebody i'm going to talk about down the line as i continue to talk about this card of assassin universe characters but shepherd's fighting abilities are second to none his hand-to-hand -hand combat skills second to none um not to mention he's blind so his blindness is actually an, an advantage for him because a lot of people use their visuals to see he doesn't need his visuals whether you fight in the light or in the dark it don't make no difference to shepherd he's got something for you um it's an, i think it's also to develop giving giving him a, a an advantage of being able to um to fight people without seeing you know what i'm gonna put do i have any chips left here yes i'm eating on the show i do not care i was eating applesauce the other time i think It's an advantage for you to be able to be blind and to be fighting different scenarios, whether it's light or dark. 
it doesn't really stop you from fighting and sometimes Shepard as the animation series goes as you get to see a comic book series he's able to lead he's able to lead the team because he's the only one who doesn't need light to see you see what I'm saying so his blindness is actually an ability and actually for me like I've seen before a lot of blind people that I've seen that I've, that I've met they are some incredible human beings so his ability his blindness enhanced all his other senses so now he's got enhanced senses indirectly his touch his sense of smell his sense of feel his, his sense of instinctualness his, his, his sense of uh, instinct um is uh is is I, I mean I'm not gonna say it's, he's, he's not superhuman but is is all his, all his other senses just seem to have elevated since he was a child since he was birthed and since he forgot how he couldn't see so he's always had to not depend on seeing things but he always depend on, on feeling things and when you feel he can he can he can even feel vibrations that's how he knows what people is coming like his senses are so acute that he knows whether you try to walk without sound he can hear you i mean he can hear your heartbeat in a way that you can't even hear your heartbeat that's how powerful this guy shepherd is he's a sick dude like his abilities are just more than beyond just him just getting a sync visor and then able to give vision i think even when that sync visor enhances everything he can do you know what i'm saying is he can sense a touch of vibration he can feel walls he can feel the ground um he can feel people walking towards him he can, his sense of smell he can separate smells you can't deceive him with sense you know what i'm saying because he's able to decipher 20 cents at the same time 20 different things to smell different 20 different ways and shepherd's gonna be able to smell them that's the abilities that this guy has he's an incredible character that elevates the team in a way like you would never believe and like i said the one thing i'm looking forward to is all those who have any kind of disability visual impairment hearing impairment um like like this guy is like um like this guy's who we relate to and i've already started noticing that already when i started doing when i started uh when i started uh um uh uh creating create when i created the cards of sas universe people were like whoa this dude this dude is man this dude is cool and i started to realize that sometimes you think that you just create a character as just a character but there's a certain point where a character becomes more than just a character when people start to relate to him or her or it's over and so shepherd's fanfare fan base those who think he's sick as hell is never going to change this guy's abilities man is second to none and he's second to none in terms of combat skills too in, on on the team um there ain't too many people got better hands than him and there ain't too many people got able to put it all together in one shot he doesn't remember he's using he's not necessarily using projectiles he's using a quantum arrow quantum yes and quantum arrows and the arrows are a projectile but he's got to draw this thing and i'm not going to tell you how that quantum arrow quantum bow works because i'm not about to give it all away but let's just say it's one of the sickest bows you've ever it's the sickest bow you've ever seen on superhero before it's the sickest and i know a lot of superheroes from in, in the cartoon world whether it's hawkeye whether it's Ronan from the Ronan Warriors, um, Green Arrow, um, Artemis, Red Arrow. I'm trying to think of all the superheroes I know with arrows, man. Man, ain't nothing of them got nothing on this dude right here, man. Shepard, oh, this is a whole level, another level, man. You know what I mean? So, yo, that's his abilities right there. Next up are the comics. Just like all the other characters, Shepard is a part of the whole Cards of Assassin Universe comics, but he's also gonna have his own thing. I, like I said before, I think one of the things when I created this bio book, this first official Cards of bio book, then I created the next version, then the next version, and then of course, so version one, version two, version three, and of course version four that's coming with the, with, with the sick ass version six version of the characters, oh my lord. Man, it's a whole different story. When I created this comic book, I said to my this bio book, I said to myself, okay, I need to use this as an opportunity to probably create a, a, a greater general story, right? Because I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I said, you know what? I'm going to create one. And it's called Shepard. Creating the names, putting these storylines together on this bio book helped to create the first official College of Sass comic book that's coming. And I remember telling myself, okay, you can't keep going bio book. This is a great read. It tells them how weight and all that good stuff, but they need a storyline. So Shepard, just like all the other characters, is going to have his own storyline. Can you imagine us having a storyline where we're understanding the history of Shepard? 
how he ended up was he born in Canada how did he end up in Canada who are the parents that he met um, just subsequent storylines and then using that storyline to create into what he became how he joined the carjacks how he met Cajun how they formed a friendship to become best friends how they are uh, I mean it's, it's a very um, linear line of I don't want to call it questioning but it's like it's gonna be one of those stories where like people are like whoa I've never seen anything like this before because the story that I got for this guy right here when I tell you I've already got a title for a book for his comic book I already have a title for his comic book already I'm not playing him just like all the other characters have a storyline that I'm gonna create for each one of them he's no different and and then what's gonna be unique about him is that nobody's that I've never seen anybody tell a story about a guy like this yes Marvel had Mark Murdock and yes who else am I thinking about uh green DC's got Green Arrow um um and Artemis and all these other characters that they got <sighs> but they ain't got this dude they ain't got this dude you know what I'm saying Shepard oh my god this the comics are gonna be sick and look the beautiful thing about the comics is because I gotta come you know that I'm showing showing it as a whole so look this is him being the part of the whole team and of course you can see him right there Shepard right there you see what I'm saying that's the whole Carjax team then in version 2 Look at that. That's him right there again. You know what I'm saying? Then version then version three. That's him right there again. You see him in the red. He stands out. You know you can see him. I even got a point until you. You can see him, the red. You see what I'm saying? And then as the storyline kept on going, I just kept on making better stories. It's all about making a better story. That's the bottom line, I think. I think there's no getting around it. When you're giving a character like this a story, you got to make sure you can tell a story in a way that people relate to. Because if the story sucks, <laughs> good luck with that. And if there's one thing I don't do, I don't do suck stories. I've seen a bunch of movies. And the one thing that gets on my nerves when I watch a bunch of movies or, or, or read anything is like, if the story sucks, I'm done reading it. So I've always been a big fan of bios. And let me tell you, this guy right here, Shepard. Yeah, let's, let's get him. Let's get him. Uh, you know what? There we go. Look at me trying to put it together. See that right there? All three. Each bio book is different from the other one. I even change the word sometimes. Like his name, um, where his story can... And I would put different things. And that's the thing about creating a storyline for a character like this. Opportunities as you grow as an artist allows you to create better storylines for this guy. Like this dude, it wasn't really... Like like people were looking at me like, hey, well, you can only do so much... Well, the... I can't put this. People used to tell me that how are you gonna have comics for each character. That's the same way I created all the characters. Like people ask you a bunch of dumb questions, and these people that usually ask you these kind of questions are people that aren't doing anything for themselves. So there are things that I just don't generally care about. Like I don't generally seek people's approval for what I'm trying to do. I already know what I want to do. I know where I want to go. I know I want to. I want to. I know how I want to get there. To me, it's not a matter of how long it takes to get there. It's when I'm gonna get there. I mean, I I always say this, man. I go one foot at a time. So when I'm creating a comic for this guy, Shepard, it's going to be the same concept. It's going to be one foot at a time. Remember, we're creating a, a, I'm creating a comic for a character who can't see, who has a great history. He has a great storyline. You know how many stories I could tell about Shepard? Not to mention with the ones that he's joined with the whole Cause of Assassin universe, but also too with the story that joins him with by himself. Like there's not too many people that can do storytelling the way I can do story. I remember I met some, uh, some people. I'm not going to say from, I've met some people from Paramount Studios. They came to my table, saw my artwork. They're like, wow, you're one hell of a storyteller. I said, yeah, thank you. And I said, I'm not really looking for a job because I'm not. I don't want to work for any of these companies. I don't think it's worth it because the thing, what I'm going to lose versus what I'm going to gain from them is not really, really good. And I remember telling me, they'd be like, man, you're an amazing storyteller. And they gave me their card. And they said, if you want to call us, you give us a call. I really, till today, I still have the card and I'm not calling because I can tell my own stories. One thing I've realized since I began this journey of this birth, since I created this first bio book, I don't need anybody else to be a writer for me. I write my own stories. Like, I don't need a writer. I can hire writers, but I don't need writers. I am the writer. I'm the one who created all these characters. They all come from my mind frame. I know what I want them to do. I know what I want them to go. So the comic strip itself, the comic book itself, is going to be what I want it to be. One of the reasons why that made me become a writer, so I have to write the story for my own, each one of my own characters, is I tried to hire writers, but they sucked. Unprofessional. Delaying things. Wasting my time. Whining about... Or we're not having an inspiration like you would do. You're not, don't even worry about inspiration. You just have no professionalism. You know what I mean? And so I've learned to not let people waste my time. So each character, so Shepard, just like all the other characters, the comic book, oh Lord have mercy, it's going to be sick. 
when I tell you the first one coming is it's gonna be fire, it's gonna be spitfire. So this guy's not only gonna have comics comics within the whole Card of Assassin universe, but he's gonna have comics of his own. You know how sick it's gonna be when people are reading this, all mannerisms of fans reading about this guy like, but he's blind. Oh, don't worry about his blindness. He's still that dude. You know what I mean? A lot of people are gonna be like, I mean, it's got to the point where most people that when they that know about the Cards of Assassin universe, they forget that he's blind. Because I, I, I tell him he has the quantum arrows and quantum bows and all the amazing things he can do. But they don't understand that he's blind. But I always feel like, like I told y'all before, I've met a lot of amazing blind people. And they do some amazing things better than people that can see. They see better people that can see. You know what I mean? So, yo, that's what I'm looking forward to with this first official comic book. It's going to be a doozy. It's going to be the it's gonna be the, it's gonna be the stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be the, the stuff that people are like, whoa, this is a sick book. And that's the beauty of being my own uh editor my own creator i don't really wait for nobody to tell me that i want to do something i just go do it so when shepherd gets his own first official comic book it's gonna be on and popping y'all so yo that's the comics right there and another thing about the comics is that i want his storyline to be like anything else his storyline is always gonna be very different from all the other characters on the team all the other characters in the car aside from all the other characters in the carjacks team but his storyline is always going to be different from the other characters even on the assassins and even all the characters from the whole card of assassin universe it's just going to be different man uh, when you have a each character wasn't meant to be the same that's what i think makes my characters unique um i wanted them to all be different from each other complete spectrums because all the people that i know that i based them on are all different from each other too that's what makes this thing very interesting so tying all that together and giving telling their story my best friend's story through a comic character it's gonna be so sick and that's what's gonna make these comics about shepherd so sick man so yo that's the comics right there Next Next up is animation. You know, animation. I got to do animation. Just like all the other characters. Shepard in the whole Cards of Sass universe, but then Shepard by himself too. Like I told you, my characters, I know that I'm strong. I've created characters so strong that they're strong enough to have their own animation series. Not everybody can say that about their characters. Not even Marvel. As many characters as Marvel has, everybody in the Marvel universe don't have their own animation. Every character in the Marvel, I mean, I've thought about the history of Marvel and all the stuff they've done, and I don't want to bring them up on my show, but like this thing about all the animations that have ever been Iron Man, Fantastic Four, Hulk, um, Spider Man, X Men, uh, I'm trying to think what else. That's about it. And they keep recycling the same animations. What other characters can you know? And except for the one season of Black Panther that they had, what other characters do you know have an animation series? I can't think of anybody and I'm the most cartoon watching person you've ever met and then Avengers of course or some, excuse me and Avengers but they've recycled as Avengers in so many ways Avengers Earth Minus Heroes Avengers Assemble Avengers whatever else I can think of then they've done then X-Men is back again X-Men 97 X-Men Evolution X-Men 97 then X-Men from the 1990s then you had Fantastic Four and then you had the reboot of Fantastic Four in the 2000s then you have Iron Man they have Iron Man, Armored War, I, 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 Armored Avengers, that, I'm, Armored Adventures, excuse me. That's about it. But whereas my characters, are you kidding me? Shepard, Cajun, Escalade, Glocks, Rasputin, Cynthia, Diesel, Sun Tzu, Shepard, I mean, excuse me, Shepard himself, of course, Artillery, Snipes, Kanji, Revo, uh, Excursion, Yukon. Dude, it's going to be endless with the animation. Like, Shepard, everything that I plan to do with the comic book is what I plan to do with the animation. I'm going to make sure they are tied together so there's no accident about what's going on, about where the storyline is going, because it's the best way to go. Because I like, I want my comic to be a tether towards my animations and then the animations to be a continuation of the comics. You see what I'm saying? I didn't know what I wanted to say. This whole idea started off one me, one animation series. And so you can look at the comics as a script if you were. You do know what I'm saying? Shepard has got his own script. His script is Spitfire, man. When I take what I'm going to do from the comics into the animation, and this is what brings up animation again. When I tell you about the animation that I created, the new animation I'm working on, the intro, oh Lord, have mercy. This intro is so sick. And I'm not, I'm just only halfway done already. I'm um, speaking of halfway done. I'm actually, I just actually finished the shepherd part of the animation intro, right? And now I'm working on the next character. You know what I'm saying? But 
Shepherd scenes are sick. Um, I remember showing it to my nephew, and you know, kids, seven year old, man, if they think something sucks, they're gonna tell you it sucks. Well, my nephew's like, oh, uncle, this is sick. I was like, yes, I did it. Yes, I love water. You know what I mean? When, and when I was out creating the animation, I was like, whoa. My nephew's like, Uncle Junior, this is so sick. I said, yes. You got to understand, the real reason why my animation, I created my own animation is because what I saw, lack of diversity. And I said, whether it was X-Men or Avengers or Fantastic Four or Iron Man, I just was like, this is a joke. And I, growing up now, watching it, as I watched it, I was like, well, I'm not going to complain about it. I'm going to do something about it. I remember in college, I think one of my greatest regrets was not going to college for what I really wanted, which was animation. I went for graphic design, and it was corny, boring. And then I went back to school again to Long Beach City College and Orange Coast College, and I started taking animation courses. I might even go back to school again and take more animation courses, just so to master the programs even some more. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking at the uh, looking at the uh, looking at the pamphlets. And I'm looking at this all the time. There's this Long Beach City College pamphlet I keep looking at. And I saw animation classes. I'm like, you know what? I might best have got to take more animation courses. Not that everything, you can even take stuff online. But I think with animation, honestly, y'all, it's best to just go to go take the courses and, and go, go take the courses in go take, take the courses in class. So I've always been waiting. I've always, it's, it's just better to take the courses in 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 in, in a in an actual class setting. I think I, I would enjoy it even more. So. I'm, this anim this whole an animation idea, having this character have his own animation series, yo, dude, it's the knowledge that I have to allow me to do this stuff. Because prior to me going to, um, excuse me, Long Beach City College and Orange Coast College, I didn't know anything about animation. I didn't know how to do any frames. I didn't know how, I didn't know what twenty four frames equal a second. I didn't know you could do poses. I didn't know you could do lights. I didn't know you could do freeze frames. I didn't know you could do all these different things. And so all these different things, knowledge I've acquired is what's allowed me, allowed me to be able to independent. Like I, I have ideas and whenever I think of ideas, I don't have to wait for anybody. I don't have to pay. Like right now I'm doing the animation cartoon intro, new one. I don't have to pay anybody to do that. I can just do it myself. I understand the concepts of animation and I understand how you need to draw and what you need to draw and how you need to create the uh, frames, how you need to create the tweens. I need to create the the different things. And when you can do that, you don't need to wait on anybody. So this is what allows me like Shepard, Oh Lord, wait till, you, wait till you see some of the stuff I've done. I, I gotta say, I'm very proud of the new animation intro I'm creating. And I'm proud of the one that I did in the past too. And speaking of the intro in the past, yo, here we go. Let me play you the animation intro that I first did, man. The one that I got. Boom, here we go. Okay, y'all, I told you it was great. And and now when you think that was great, wait to see the new one that I got coming. Part of being your own um your own boss is not really having to wait on anybody to let you have an ideas that you like that you want to execute. You can just go and execute them and not care what anybody thinks. So in terms of the animation for Shepard by himself, which is gonna be great storylines, which I've already got, and then of course him being part of the whole Cards of Assassin universe, is gonna be off the chain. Man, I cannot wait, y'all. So that's the animations right there. The animation is the real reason why the whole Cards of Assassin universe started. I wanted my own characters and my own animated series because I just didn't want to like keep watching cartoons that had no diversity in it. It was like, it was like, really? I gotta watch like six white guys and one Caucasian woman and one African American and y'all make it seem as diverse. It's not diverse. I even though as much as I like Avengers Assemble, there's nothing diverse about that show. As much as I like Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, there's nothing diverse about it. You know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> you got Iron Man, Captain America, Hawkeye, 
uh, Hulk, uh, and they got um, Black Widow, and then you got one, one, and they got Black Panther, and they got Ant Man, and then the Avengers Assemble, you got Iron Man, Captain America, Hulk, um, Black Widow, Thor, um, and it's the same, and it's the same thing too. Thor was also an Avengers Assemble, Avengers of My Heroes, and they got they got Falcon. So that's what they're using to make it diverse. And even on the subsequent seasons, season three and four, as they brought in more cap characters, it still really wasn't that diverse because it was still the same old, same old. So, Carter of Assassin is my animation. Shepard's going to get his own animation. Then I can tiver his animation into the whole Carter of Assassin universe. And they're all inter interconnect interconnected storylines. You know what I mean? It's going to be on and popping, y'all. So, yo, that's the animations right there. <laughs>
which was uh, Avengers Infinity Infinity uh, End uh, End Game. Um, you know, I don't want my stuff to be like that with the Cardinal Assassin universe. When the stories can't no longer be good, I'm gonna call it a wrap on the last one. But the stories are always gonna be great, not good, but great. You know, imagine Shepard by himself, and then Shepard with the whole Kardashian team, and then Shepard with the whole Cardinal Assassin universe, and just having these amazing actors play these roles. Like Shepard is such an in-depth character. Whatever actor I ended up with would would have to prove to me that yo, dude, my A game is on point. Because you would, I wouldn't let you falsify you being blind and you doing things on your own. So I would make them go be around somebody who is blind and have to live it like that every single day. You know what I'm saying? Because there's some amazing human beings on this earth that have never seen a thing in their life, and they have achieved so many amazing things. Whether it's musicians, whether it's lawyers whether it's engineers whether it's whatever it is whatever field of craft that they do man it's some amazing human beings um i was actually thinking about taking up sign language um because i was in a, in, a, in, a, in a i was in washington dc and i went to a museum it was a museum it was some kind of museum and the person working at the museum she was speaking she was doing sign language to me i was like what does that mean and she spent like five ten minutes teaching me sign language. i was like whoa sign language is kind of sick i gotta learn this aside from all the other languages that i'm trying to learn which includes uh, Japanese, Spanish, Korean, French, Zulu, Swahili. Uh, I know I'm leaving something out. So we got Japanese, Spanish, Korean, French, uh, Zulu, Swahili. Then I only speak my own language, Yoruba. So I basically, I, I know seven languages, basically. I learned at the same time, which is wild. Yoruba is the only one I got to learn because that's my language. You know what I'm saying? Ekaro, Ekale. That's me speaking my language right now. Baolunlo, which means how's it going? I'm teaching y'all a little something, something right now. But you know, that's the beauty of, of when you do movies. You can interject language into it. And I promise you, a lot of these characters, because we're all Nigerians. Most of, these, most of these characters are based on Nigerian people, which is I'm Nigerian myself. These characters are going to have a, like, a lot of Nigerian um, culture up in it. I'm not leaving that out. Heck no. It's going down, baby. I mean, I mean, that's why the company is called, I named the company Sanus Vision after my grandfather because his name is Sanus Vision, Sanusi, the, one of the great warrior kings in African history. And so it didn't take any mess. So I'm not going to take any mess. I'm not going to beg you to do something. I'm just going to go do it. In life, nobody owes you nothing. And so that's the same way I'm going to apply to doing movies for my character for Shepard and all the other characters, you know, that come before this, which has been Cajun, Escalade, Glocks, Raspune, Cynthia. Now we're on Shepard. The next week, I got the next character, Diesel. You know what I mean? But Shepard in movies... Oh my God, getting the right actor, the right setting, the right story, and then having the comic book and the animation be a tether to create the movies, it's over. Game over. So, you know, that that's our show for today, man. I'm excited about all the opportunities that Shepard's going to have as a, as a character. Uh, and just being able to do movies is going to be incredible. But when you think about it, right, you know, this character, never seen anything like this. And me being having the, the mind that I generally have, the way I think, I'm not going to allow anybody to ruin this amazing character or this amazing concept. So, yo, that's our show for today. You know what I'm saying? Before we get up out here, we want to recap everything we talked about today because Shepard is an amazing character. Let's talk about his origins. We talked about his origins, where he came from, how he started, how he became Shepard, what led to him becoming Shepard, his history not understanding the history of where his family came from and how he, he's got to figure out whether they're around or not around and they've been adopted by a loving family then his abilities not wanting to be fall victim because he doesn't know what happened to his parents so he teaches himself many forms of discipline martial artists and taking his abilities and then even though he's blind all the all the other senses his visual sensing becomes um elevated he's able to feel vibrations you know what I'm saying? He can see, he can hear better, he can smell better. And of course, the comics. Come on, now the comics gotta be on point. Then you got the animation, and then you got the movies, of course. That is for sure, man. So you know, that's Shepard today, man. An amazing character who's who's a who's 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 elevating the College of Assassin universe to the next, next, next greatest level, man. I I'm sorry, but my animation series is one of the greatest animation series ever created. People are already saying that to me already. Already saying that to me. You know how many people are telling me when you come out? Yo, you better be that dude in your in the FedEx package guy, UPS guy. You gotta be like doing what Stan Lee was doing in the movies, man. You gotta be in the movies, even wearing the bucket hat. Just just be a postman, whatever. Just be in the movies, man, doing what you do, being you. So I'm looking forward to that, man. And look, before we get up out of here, we gotta show you all the cool new stuff we got. First things first, as phone cases. If you love phone cases, whether it's Apple phone cases or Samsung Galaxy or Google Pixel, we've got cases for all those sizes. All the way from sizes uh shoot, 10 all the way to the 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max. 
Then we got the Samsung Galaxy Auto 24 Ultra. Then we got the Google Pixels. Excuse me. I believe the Google 8 and 9. So we got all that right there. Then of course, you got this phone cases right here. There's another one right here. Now the cool thing about this one is that this one, a lot of ladies love this. You can put, but guys like it too, but the ladies love it more. You can put your phone right here and then you got spots to put stuff, right? See that? You got spots to put credit card stuff right there. See that? You know what I mean? And you just put your phone case right here. And yes, as always, I'm going to demonstrate for you to let you know exactly how this phone case works because I don't want you to think it's just bull drive. Ain't no bull drive. Yes, I know this vision. We do the real deal, baby. We do the real deal. So check it. Look, the phone case goes in there. See that? Look at that. Phone case in there. That's what's up. Y'all know what we're doing over here. So sound vision, man. That's the cool stuff we, we do. All we do is cool stuff. Y'all know that. Y'all know we don't play. So that's me getting this out of there. You know what I mean? So yo, you know we don't play. We making cool stuff. All we do is make cool stuff. Huh. Y'all know this is old. This ain't, this, this is stuff I used to buy. So that's our phone cases right there. Now we're gonna talk about some more cool stuff. We got t-shirts. You know what I'm saying? We got t-shirts. Look at that. We got t-shirts and I gotta show it to y'all. We got t-shirts, look at that. I'm putting on a hanger so y'all can see it real good. You know what I'm saying, 360. And they made an awesome material. Look at the front, look at the detail on this thing, man. You know what I mean? Look at the left sleeve right there. If you flip it, look at the back. It's made out of the coolest material too. Dry sweat technology, man. You wear this whether you wanna work out or just wanna look cooler in the shirt, I sure it's all for you. Look at the right sleeve right there. You know what I'm saying? So that's the Carjax t-shirt right there. We ain't done. Shoot. We got more t-shirts for you. Now we got tank tops too. You know what I'm saying? We got tank tops now too for men and women. But this one, this a dude's tank top. Look at this tank top right here. Sick as hell, the detail. The material dries fast, so when you wash it, you can expect it to dry within two hours if you hang it up. You know what I mean? This is the technology we're working with right here. Look at this. You know I'm gonna be wearing this as the summer's coming around. I'm gonna be wearing this plenty, plenty. You know what I'm saying? That's tank tops right there. Then if you love more characters, because I didn't want to just mess with the Card Drive Assassin characters only, you know, we got uh, we got the Blade t-shirt right here. Look at that. Man, that is sick. That is sick right there. And I don't want to forget Lone Sleeves, I'm going to go get you some. Look at this, look at this Blade t-shirt right here. So I got the classic, I got the modern Blade in the front, then I got a classic one that I drew in the back. Look at that, man, the detail. Look at the left arm. We are always doing detail. And then check out the right arm more detail sometimes i love putting stuff on hangers because it's easier to show people and then check this out this one is the all-star tee check that out man you know what i mean look at this that's right it's got every character you can think of iron man batman card of assassins turtles captain america wolverine techno man blade um who, who else am i looking on here wonder woman black panther spider-man you know what I'm saying? And then Mega Man on, on top of it. And then when I flip it, check out on the back. Man, we got more superheroes. Thundercats, Storm, Voltron right there. Green Lantern, Jon Stewart. The assassins are on the back. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, who else? Captain Marvel. Flash, Captain America. Uh, who else am I living on? Gambit from the X-Men. I mean, I put the Hulk, Black Lightning. I put everybody in the Godmother on this shirt. I mean, this is ridiculous. You know what I mean? So, yo, this is what we're doing over here, Sun Vision, man. Then I put, of course, Captain America, Sam Wilson right there in the front one right there. Then, of course, I think I mentioned Wolverine right there. You know what I'm saying? So, yo, that's what's on this t-shirt right there. Then I got to get you the long sleeve. Y'all give me a second. Because I got to get you that. If there's one thing we do in the sound and vision, it's diversifying. Guess what else we got now? Long sleeve tees. 
you don't have to get your long sleeve tee. Look at this. This is a design, and they come in multiple characters. This is a Card of Assassin long sleeve tee right here. But we got them in multiple characters too. You got Card of Assassins. Look at this basic design right here. EST when it was created. And then of course, classic Card of Assassin characters right there. And you get them in different characters too. You got Card of Assassins. You got Blade, Iron Man, Batman, Wonder Woman, Voltron, Turtles, Mega Man. Anything on this banner can go on a long sleeve tee. I mean, long sleeve tees, man. The great thing about our long sleeve tees. They're great for general wear, but guess what else they're great for? For working out. And who don't love working out? You know what I'm saying? And then, of course, one of my new designs right here. You know what I'm saying? Look at this. Blade on the front. Yes, we can double up. Iron Man on the back. So if there's two characters you like, and you know there's going to be two characters you like. Everybody wants that. Two characters they love most on one shirt. Check it out. I got Blade Shurikens on the right arm right there. Look at this. I know you can see the detail. Look at that. You see the shark is right there? I know you see it. And then you've got Iron Man, Avengers. He's an Avenger. That's right. You, I know you see it. You know what I mean? So Iron Man on the back, as you can see. Blade in the front. Yo, this is what we're doing in Sound Division, man. Always making cool stuff. And then last but not least, the footwear. You know we got the footwear. You know we got the footwear. The Batas Low Tops. You know we got the footwear. I got to show it to you. You know I got to show it to you, man. Look at this. The art is always different. So look at the foot. Look at the right foot. Look at the left foot. I've had this shoe for a good minute, man. And I do mean a good minute. And it looks still looks amazing. Look at this. The detail of it, man. This is what we're doing in Sound Division. We're always doing cool stuff. Low tops right here. Batas low tops, two low tops. They are amazing. This this is a, this is my favorite blue one to wear. I'm always wearing it only on special occasions. But, uh, but you know, since it's a special occasion, I'm deciding to show it to y'all. You know what I'm saying? So you can see it. Look at this. Look at them right there next to each other. As you can see, the inside is always different. And then you flip it, the outsides are always different. Look at that. You see that? This is what we're doing in Sun Division, man. So big things, man. Look at that. Look at that. Sick, man. And then, of course, you got the high tops. Come on now. You know we got the high tops. Some people prefer high tops. You know what I'm saying? I can't tell many compliments I've gotten on these shoes, man. So I got on this side, Cajun. And I've got on this side, Sun Tzu. But you can get them in any cactus, too. Card for Assassins, Blade, Iron Man, Batman, Wonder Woman, Turtles, Voltron, Mega Man, Black Panther, Captain Marvel, Storm. Any drawing you see on this banner right here is available. And any drawing you see on the website is available on the Bata Social. You got to go check it out. Look at this. Look at this amazing. Look at art right here. Even got the Sphinx and Seth on the inside of the shoe. You know what I'm saying? Look at that. Look at that. This is sick, man. You got to go to soundvision.com and get it. Look how sick this is, man. Y'all may views this shoe's guess on whenever I pop it, the, the video on uh, on my various plat social media platforms. Yo, soundvision.com, man. So available on many, many characters. And even with the low tops, too. I don't want to forget. Even with the low tops, you can get it with any character. Chaos of Assassin's Classic or Chaos of Assassin's Modern 5. You got Escalade, Cajun, Glocks, Raspune. Cynthia, Diesel, Shepard, Sun Tzu, Artillery, Kanji, Revo, Snipes, Yukon, and of course other characters, Batman, Iron Man, Blade, uh, Wonder Woman, uh, Goku vs. Vegeta, Mega Man, um, Ronan Warriors, you name it, it's available on soundvision.com, so yo, go get your pair of bathos today and make your feet feel great, you know what I'm saying, so yo, and don't forget, we even got posters now, like I told you, if you want a poster, whether it's just Shepard by himself or the whole Card of Assassin universe, you got to go get your poster so you can be officially part of the movement, man. So, yo, available. And we got it on Canvas Art, too. So, you know what I'm saying? Go be sure to go get that. So, y'all, that's our show for today, man. You know, I want to thank y'all for listening. Don't forget about it here. You know, we got to talk about the first official Card of Flash comic book that's coming out. Yes, I talked about it in the comic section. But, yo, get out there. Go on soundvision.com and get you this bio book. Because this bio book is going to allow you to understand what's going on with the first official Card of Flash comic book that's coming out. And it is coming. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a sick one. That's right. You heard me from here. It's going to be a sick one. It's going to be fire. It's going to be spitfire. So go get ready. Get ready for something amazing. Kajak Sats comic book. This Bible book. And this Bible book is going to let you know what's going on with everything from the Kajak's universe, from the Kajak's the heroes, Cajun, Escalade, Glocks, Raspian, Cynthia, Shepard, Diesel, to the villains that wish they are facing. These infamous villains, man, led by Lord Sun Tzu himself. And he's joined forces with these amazing other amazing villains. Artillery, Kanji, Snipes, Revo, Excursion, Yukon, Snipes, and of course the, the Coyotes, the Andrew Coyotes. So the Card of Assassin universe, man, get this Bible because when the first official Card of Assassin combo comes out, you're going to be like, oh man, that is what's up. 
Now I know what's going on with this card of Saturn. You're, you're not surprised. You're surprised, but you understand what each character is and who they are. You know what I mean? So that's why this Bible book is important. So soundvision.com, get you a copy today and get your read on, man. So, yo, that's our show for today. You know, before we got about it here, we got to thank our sponsors, man. You know what I'm saying? This Soundvision podcast is brought to you by an amazing company. We made two amazing companies, Tegler, because these bills got to be paid, so let's pay them. Tegler, if you need executive services from plumbers to pediatricians and everything in between, Get your search on today at Tegler.com. Don't wait. Search today. That's Tegler.com. That's Tegler.com. Look, if you want the best professionals, landscapers, um, 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 plumbers, pediatricians, carpenters, uh, um, you know, any professional, Tegler.com. Tegler.com. Y'all don't wait. Search Tegler.com. Go to Tegler.com and find the best professionals in your area, whether it's the Long Beach, California area or just in California in general, or if you're in the Virginia area. That's right. Whether it's Georgetown, uh, whether it's Great Falls area, or just all of Virginia. So check it out, man. Tegler.com. That's Tegler.com. And this podcast also brought to you by Anadel for the Nacle. Don't live with foot pain. Let Anadel for the Nacle make your feet happy again. That's AnnadelleCenter.com for details, y'all. That's AnnadelleCenter.com for details, y'all. Man, make sure you get your feet on the right path so you don't hurt no more. You know what I'm saying? So, yo, AnnadelleCenter.com, y'all. So, y'all, I want to thank you for listening. This podcast is produced, written, and directed by yours truly. I did well at Bookie Jr. Look, look, you love my Nigerian accent, huh? Please check out our website at soundvision.com for all the cool stuff we got. From our podcast, to our products, to our bio books, to our water bottles, you know what I'm saying? To our phone cases, you know what I'm saying? To our other types of phone cases. We got bucket hats. Yes, even the Soundvision Podcast t-shirt. Always make sure you check this out. Hey, I always got this on every Friday, every time I record it. Y'all see it. We got them in hoodies, beanies, and all kinds of different stuff now right, right here, man. So, and anything we don't have it on our website for soundvision.com, please tell us. And whatever you order, we can ship it out to you and get it to you, man. So, yo, get your shop on today on soundvision.com. We got all the coolest stuff, man. And also, too, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hey, it's the future. We're growing every single day. The amount of followers and subscribers we have now is incredible. It's more than I ever dreamed of having, and it's put us on a path to where we are getting some views. This is how good my videos are. They are next to celebrity videos. That's how I know you know I've come a long way. I'm always having friends, family members, like, bro, I just saw your video next to a LeBron James video. I just saw your video next to a uh, uh, um, Denzel Washington video. I just saw your video next to a Michael Jordan video. And I'm over here like, what? Yeah, I'm like, I'm shocked to be hearing this stuff. But my friends always tell me, like, your, your videos are getting traction like crazy. I'm always seeing your videos everywhere. I'm like, yes. Finally, and so that's what happened when I decided to switch my podcast completely from Spotify, Apple, or whatever else people were just listening to, like visual listening is what I like to call it, because people love to see you and hear you. And so I said, you know what, I'm going on um, putting my stuff on YouTube, and it has worked out for me, no complaints. Be consistent. I'm putting it up every Monday. New episodes are awesome. It's fire. The breakthrough episodes that have come since that have come, the breakthrough with the Thundercats episode, which was an amazing amount of viewership. It was insane insane the, the amount of subscribers i picked up in that time frame was nuts man you know what i mean and we're still growing we've built up we've we've used that um i've used that point to build even higher and higher and higher and higher so i'm not there are no complaints over here so please subscribe to us so that you can know and be, get notifications on new episodes and new videos that are always posting every day so yo follow us on youtube channel at sunday's vision you know what i'm saying hey don't miss out you, you missing out. Hey, you ain't you, you it's your it's your loss if you don't get to check us out. Check me out. You know I've got great stuff. I already know my videos are spitfire. So yo, you know what I'm saying? And please don't forget our social media platforms at YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, X, and Instagram. Yes, social media is a part of our lives now, but use it for what you need it for, not what everybody else is doing. People are free to post whatever they want, just like I'm free to post whatever I want. My art is my is my life. I'm not trying to hide my art. I need the world to see it. That's how, I've, I've come, that's how come my YouTube channel has grown. That's how come my YouTube channel can be placed next to other celebrities. And I'm not even, and then maybe I'm an indirect celebrity, but I'm getting to the point where I'm going to be very known by everybody one day. And so my social media is, is what's helped. YouTube is, is, is a, fanat, it's a great spot. Uh, Facebook, you got to be able to use it. TikTok, until the US kicks it out of the country, we're still going to be using it. You know what I'm saying? X is there. I feel like it's more of a, a gossip channel, but people, st I'm still posting videos on there. I don't really care about what's going on, everything else around there. Then, of course, Instagram. Um, you know, Instagram and TikTok have two things in common. They're both shadow banning their own users, which is embarrassing. That's probably why I got off of Instagram. It's a joke that you're shadow banning your own users. 
it's it's embarrassing TikTok and Instagram. You are a disgrace to yourselves. But I'm gonna keep using it. But ever since I sent a few words to Instagram, I mean to TikTok, they stopped messing with me. They know not to mess with my channel anymore because they cost me so many followers. And I was wondering, hey, what's going on over here? And next thing you know, somebody saying that oh, they're shadow banning their own users. So I wrote them a note. Like, yo, y'all need to stop messing with my channel, man. I ain't done nothing to y'all, so y'all need to leave me alone. I'm bringing in revenue to y'all, so y'all need to back off my TikTok page. You know what I'm saying? But the main three, until they kick TikTok out, you still need to use YouTube. You need to use your Facebook. You need to get your TikTok on. You know what I'm saying? And look, other platforms too, whether it's Twitch if you're a gamer, Instagram, X, you know what I'm saying? Depends on what you do. And so, you know, you need these platforms. There's no getting around it. I don't care what anybody says. You can say whatever you want, but you, you, gonna, you need it, man. So, you know... I can't stress enough the importance of uh, of having uh, of having your own platform. You have got to use your social media platform and stop complaining about what it ain't doing for you and figure out what it is doing for you. As artists, man, we've always wanted free platforms and there's nothing better than social media to help us with our free platforms. If you want to do something amazing, you got to get on your social media. You got to get your social media game up. Once you do that, everything is going to take care of itself. You know what I mean? So, yo. As always, you know, you know what I'm saying? As always, y'all, please don't forget to review us. Rate us. Give us a five star. Don't be a hater. And as always, y'all, continue to inspire and achieve. Have a great week. Stay safe, y'all. Peace. Check this Cooper Carton intro out. You can see the rest of it on my YouTube channel, and you can also check it out on my website at sunshineshop.com. Stay safe, y'all. Peace.